Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this video lecture on computer system architecture. In this video lecture, we are going to cover register organization. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bhatt. Let us start. First, the topics that we are going to cover in this video. We will start with the topic what is a processor register? Then we will cover different types of registers available in most of the processors. Then in between we will cover some register design issues. The issues that are related with these registers. Then we will cover few more types of registers that are condition code registers and program status word. And finally we will conclude with the examples of register organizations. So let us begin with our first topic that is what are processor registers? As you are aware that a computer system consists of a number of components. We have a central processing unit CPU that is responsible for executing different kinds of instructions. Associated with CPU, we have some components. One is the main memory, the RAM, that stores the data and instructions on which the CPU operates. We have input-output devices that are connected with the system to input or output the data. And all these components are connected through a system bus. That is the data pathway. Now, if we further zoom into this CPU, we found that this CPU itself consists of different components. Inside the CPU, we have an arithmetic and logic unit, which is the main circuitry that performs different arithmetic and logical operations. And we have registers that are the scratch pads or registers are the memory units inside the CPU that store the data on which the ALU performs different kinds of operations. And to coordinate these operations, we have a control unit C. And to control these operations, we have a control unit CU. The CU is responsible for coordinating every kind of operation inside the processor. So let us further expand this control unit. We see that this control unit controls different operations inside the processor. So let us see. Inside the processor we have arithmetic logic unit and inside the arithmetic logic unit we have some registers accumulator, multiplier quotient, MBR, and automatic logic circuits. <clears throat> On the other hand, we have control unit that issues different kinds of control signals. And these control signals control and coordinate every action, every operation inside the processor. But where are the data stored on which these operations are performed. So actually the data is, we get the data from input output devices that are the external devices. And before the processor or CPU performs any kind of operation on that data, it must be brought into the main memory. Still the processor directly cannot process this data, may the data stored inside the main memory. If any kind of operation is to be performed on this data, this data must be brought into one of the registers available inside the processor. So for example, if an instruction is stored inside the main memory, it must be brought into this register, instruction register. And where we have to put the address of that instruction, that must be inside the MAR. Where does the MAR gets, gets this address? It gets from the PC. And when we read the data from the memory, we store it inside the memory buffer. Or if we have to write the data inside this memory, we 
put it in the MBR and then it is stored in the memory. When the operation is performed on this data, addition, subtraction or any other kind of operation, then we make use of this accumulator or multiplier quotient if it is a multiplication operation and different and many uh, registers. So we see that this arithmetic and logic unit it performs different operations but the control signals are issued by a control unit. The data that this ALU gets so that it can perform different kinds of operations on that data must be available inside these registers. So the input to the ALU is the control signal and the data stored inside the registers. So the, res the result that comes out of this ALU are different kinds of flags that show the status of the, this arithmetic or logic operation. And the result, the addition subtraction result, that is again stored inside the registers. So an important component in the operation of a CPU are these registers. It cannot perform any operation without that data being available inside the register. It cannot store any kind of data without storing that inside the registers. So we see that we have two main components inside the CPU besides this control unit. One is ALU that performs the function, the operation that we want to perform and another is the registers that act as the arguments to this ALU function and this, these registers store our data on which this operation is to be performed. So these registers inside different processors, there are different kinds of registers. For example, we have M6800 machine that has these kinds of registers. Data registers, address registers, program status, program counter, status register. If we talk of x86 architecture, x8086, it has these kinds of registers, AX, BX, CX, DX. We have pointer, stack pointer, base pointer, source index, destination index. We have code segment, data segment, stack segment, extra segment. We have flags. So these are different kinds of registers that are used and utilized by the CPU or ALU to perform different kinds of operations. Similarly, if we talk of X386 Pentium 4, it has these kinds of registers. Now we can say that what are registers? Registers are very small, super fast, easily accessible memory locations inside a processor used to store machine instructions, memory address and other kind of data. So registers, first attribute of these registers is that these are very small. So this means their size is very small. These registers we found in the form of bits an 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit, 64 bit register and not beyond that. And they are super fast. They lie at the top of this memory hierarchy. If we see this memory hi hierarchy, we have different kinds of memory elements. We have magnetic tapes. We have magnetic disks, CD-ROM, CD drives. We have DVD, DVD RAM. We have main memory, we have cache. And then at the top lies this register. It is the fastest memory inside the processor and it is speed is equivalent to the CPU speed. So these registers are used directly by the processor. They are operated on directly by the processor. But though they are very small, they are costly because as per the principle or rule of this memory hierarchy, the smaller the size, the faster the memory and the costlier per bit it is rate then they can be easily access, accessed by the processor. They are directly accessible by the processor. And these memory locations are directly inside the processor. They are used to store what? Machine instructions. Whatever instruction that the processor is going to execute, it must be available inside the register. It is used to store memory addresses. Whatever and what kind, whatever kind of memory address that the CPU is operated on, operating on, that must be available inside a register. And it is used to store every kind of data. 
if we are going to perform addition of two numbers, those two numbers must be brought inside the registers before any kind of addition operation is initiated or performed by the processor on that data. So these registers are an important part and component of the processor. So registers provide CPO with a platform to execute machine instructions at a steady pace. Because if we remove these registers, and uh, then processor has to access the data from the main memory or cache. And there is a hell of difference between the speeds of processor and the main memory. So it will slow down the overall speed of the CPU. So that is why we bring the data inside these registers which have equivalent clock speed as uh, uh, that of the CPU. So now moving further, now let us see the second topic, what are the different kinds of registers? We have two types of registers based on their role. We have user visible registers. So as the name suggests, these are visible to the users. Which users? These are visible to the programmers, as we will see. Then we have control and status registers. Some registers which are used to control the operations inside the processor and to set different kinds of status inside the processor while executing different instructions. Let us start with the first type. What are user visible registers? So obviously these are visible to users and programmers as a program if i am writing a program in assembly language or a c language i am able to use these registers inside my program instructions so they are visible and these are referenced by means of machine language if you compile a c program into the assembly language it is first converted into an assembly language and then to the machine language and this machine language directly references these different kinds of registers. So there are four further kinds of these user visible registers. The first we call general purpose registers, second data registers, then we have address registers and the condition codes. So general purpose registers they are assigned a variety of functions. As the name suggests, they are general. They have general purposes. They can be used for different purposes. So we can use them, can contain operand of an opcode. We can store the operand of an instruction inside these. We can also use them for addresses. We can store data as well as addresses inside these general purpose registers. Then we have data registers. So what are data registers? They store data. It can be used with any machine instruction that performs operations on data. So we can use this data register to store different kind of data while performing an instruction or executing an instruction inside the processor. But these data registers are not used to store addresses. They are specific for data storage to store different data but they cannot be used to store addresses as the general purpose registers that can be used to store both data as well as addresses so for example we have an accumulator accumulator register can be used to store the data then we have address register so as its name suggests it is a special kind of register that stores addresses while performing different operations on the data. So it can be used to calculate effective addresses or operand addresses depending upon the kind of or addressing mode that has been employed while uh, executing that instruction. But an address register cannot be used to store data. It is a specific register only for addresses. As data register accumulator is specific for data. So for example, we have segment registers, we have memory address register, which is a register which always stores addresses. And we have data register which always stores data. It can also store instruction, it can also store data. But memory address register is a register that always holds the address. Address of the location of the memory from which we want to read the data or we want to write the data. 
Then let us now consider some of the design issues related to these registers. So with general purpose registers, we have some issues. We need to answer these uh, issues so that we can implement these registers to the best of the performance of the CPU. So whether to use general purpose registers as general or make them specialized. Should we use some registers as general purpose registers or should we make them specialized? So if we make them general purpose, what is the benefit? It increases flexibility and programmers option. They are flexible. Since I am able to store both data as well as address inside that register, so it gives a flexibility to the programmer to use that register for whatever purpose he wishes. So it gives programmers different options. And when we mark them as specialized, it makes them less flexible. For example, a data register cannot be utilized by a programmer for addresses. So it gives him less flexibility. But it increases general purpose registers increase in instruction size and complexity. When we have general purpose registers and inside the code, we need to check whether this general purpose register is storing address or data. We need to check that. So we have to increase the instruction size and it increases the complexity of the program. But if we make them specialize it, because I know that uh, MAR is always holding address. So I need not to check what is stored inside a memory address register. So it is always holding the data. It is always holding an address. So it makes the instruction smaller and faster because we need not to check for the kind of data that is stored inside them. So this is one. So we go for a trade off between some registers as general purpose and some as specialized. Another is another design issue is how many general purpose registers, how many general purpose registers should be available inside a processor. If we want to provide both specialized as well as general purpose, then the number of general purpose registers. So as uh, the research suggests, the best performance is given when we use registers between 8 to 32. If we have 8 to 32 number of general purpose registers, then that gives optimal performance. If we have less number, that means more references, more number of memory references, then how the size of general purpose registers. If we are using general purpose registers, first we have to determine how many and then the size. What should be the optimal size of that register in bits, whether it's 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit. So that it should be large enough to hold full address. So if we are accessing a one gigabyte of RAM, so definitely it requires two raised power twenty. Uh, uh, two power twenty. So it requires twenty bits to access one GB RAM. Uh, oh, sorry, two raised power thirty to access one GB RAM because two raised power one, uh, two raised power twenty ten is K twenty. So we require two raised power twenty. So it should be large enough to hold the largest address inside the processor. Then it should be large enough to hold the full word. Because if we are reading data from the memory, we read it in the form of words. So the full word should be it should be large enough to hold the full word. And often possible to combine two data registers. Sometimes we may combine two data registers to form a single register. So for example, we have AX register. We can divide it into AL and AH. AL represents the first 8 bits and the AH represents the second 8 bits. So we can combine two data registers to form a single register. Now, the fourth uh, type of registers that are called condition code registers or simply as flags. So what are condition code registers? These are least partially visible to the user. Though they are visible to the user, but they are very least visible to the users. And these condition code registers represent different bits 
different flags that are set by the processor hardware as a result of operations so if we are performing different operations addition subtraction in between depending upon the result these bits are set so set in addition to the operation results these bits can remember processing status between instructions so if we have performed some instruction and now we are executing second instruction so what was the result of the previous instruction that we can remember with the help of these condition codes for example if the previous result was negative if the previous result was zero if the previous result was false so according to that result some bits are set and we can check that status in the next instruction so this means these bits can remember processing states for example if an arithmetic operation may produce a positive negative or zero or overflow result a condition code is accordingly set condition code means a bit is set in the psw it is mostly implemented with program status word so these condition code registers are then used for branching operation for example if we want to branch depending upon the result of the last operation if the result was positive then we want to branch to some one condition if the uh, result was negative then we want to branch to some other code and if the result was zero then we want to execute different code and collected in one or more registers usually form a part of control register so when we collect this data depending upon the, what is the operation that we have performed we set these different flags and put them in a register that forms the control register and machine instructions can read these control registers or condition code registers through implicit references we need not to put ex explicit reference in the code and we cannot alter these results because they are set by the result and we cannot alter them so let us see what are the flags in the condition code register some of the flags that are inside the condition code register for example carry carry is a condition code flag and if the carry of the last operation whether addition or subtraction if it is addition then we can have carry and if it's subtraction we can have borrow depending upon that if there was a carry or a borrow this carry flag is set we can have overflow if we have performed some operation and there was overflow if i have multiplied two numbers and the result is a number that cannot be stored in the register data so we say that it is overflow so overflow can be checked and when this overflow occurs a flag overflow flag is automatically set in the condition code register we can have zero flag so zero is set if we have performed some operation and the result is zero this zero flag is set negative this means if we have multiplied or uh, if we have performed some operation on the result <coughs> the result is negative so that negative result sets the negative flag and extend <coughs> this bit is set if we are performing multiple precision operation if we have multiple precision operation in terms of floating then this extend bit is set now what are the advantages and disadvantages of these condition codes the first <coughs> it reduces the number of compare and test instructions because we do not need to compare different operations or different instructions as the result is set automatically inside the flags and we can read these flags and according to that we can perform <coughs> sorry the conditions or the tests condition instructions such as branch are simplified relate and if we are using these condition codes it simplifies these branch operations because these branch and test and branch operations can read this flag these flags and according to that they can take different decisions and they can facilitate multi-way branching for example if we uh, want to perform uh, less than greater than or equal to it is a multi-way multi branch we want to test whether the result is less than or greater than or equal to so far that or zero so far that with a single operation that uh, different flags are set and we can use those flags results of those flags to facilitate multi-way branch condition codes can be saved on the stack during subroutine calls 
as uh, when we uh, switch to some function or subroutine the result is stored on the stack and we can store these condition codes as well what was the status at that time so we can store that as well <laughs> but what are the disadvantages Ye, these condition codes add complexity both inside the hardware because inside the hardware we have to provide the provision to set these flags and then check these flags and as well as inside the software they are irregular they are typically not part of the main data path because when we perform some uh, operation addition subtraction that is the main data path but the condition codes are set they are an additional requirement they are an additional task they are an additional functionality that are set inside the processor they are not part of the regular operation that the processor performs so that is why they require extra hardware connections often condition code machines must use special non condition code instructions for special situations anyway such as for example bit checking if we want to check bits we want to go for loop control or we want to go for semaphore uh, operations atomic semaphore operations in a pipeline implementation condition codes require special synchronization to avoid conflicts if we have a pipeline processor in which different instructions are in pipeline we are executing multiple instructions they are in different stages and at different stages we have set different condition codes so we need to check the synchronization between these to avoid conflicts now the second category that is control and status registers this was regarding the user visible registers we have control and status registers so what are control and status registers there are a variety of processor registers that are employed to control the operation of the processor when the processor executes different kinds of instructions it uses some registers to control operation inside the environment of the processor so most of these on most machines are not visible we do not see these registers or the data stored inside these registers that is implicit the processor uses them for conducive environment for uh, successful implementation of or execution of the registers some of them are visible to the machine instructions but in a controller operating system mode as you might be aware aware that when we execute an instruction it can be executed in two modes one is called user mode and another is called controlled or system mode operating system mode and operating system mode has special privileges on in those special privileges under those special privileges we may be able to view the status of these control registers essential registers for instruction execution what are those registers which are required by the processor control registers that are required by the processor the first one is program counter what is program counter it is a register used by the processor so what does it hold it holds the address of an instruction to be fetched it holds address of the instruction to be fetched because main program is stored inside the ram and we fetch one by one instructions from this ram and put them inside the processor so each time an instruction is fetched it is put inside the instruction register so where did we get the address of the instruction that we need to fetch that is stored inside and controlled inside this program counter we increment it or if we have a jump we change its value so we transfer pc into then mar and then we read the instruction next instruction is next register is instruction register ir so what is ir ir is a special register that holds the instruction that we are going to execute that the processor is going to execute so processor executes different instructions that instruction is inside the memory its address is hold inside the pc the address from pc is stored inside the memory address register then we read the instruction at that address from the memory that instruction is then transferred into the memory buffer register mbr and from this memory buffer or data register we transfer that register that instruction into the instruction register for its execution 
so to execute an instruction the instruction must be available inside the instruction register so it is a special register used by the processor then we have a memory address register memory address register contains the address of location in memory so whenever we read or write data from the memory its address must be indicated that address is stored inside the memory address register if it is an instruction then pc will give it its address or if it is a data item again we must have its address inside the memory address register so any instruction or data will be read from this memory whose address is stored inside the memory address register then we have memory buffer or data register data register it contains a word or data to be written to memory or word most frequently read so whatever we read from this memory or whatever we write on to this memory that data is or coming from the memory buffer register if we are writing then it must be available in mbr if we are reading it must be available inside the mbr so these are special registers used by the processor then we have pre program status word psw so it is a special register often known as psw program status word that contains status information it is in addition to the condition codes condition codes are some of the conditions that are set and those conditions codes are again set inside this PSW but this PSW holds some uh, more information reg regarding the uh, execution of the instructions it contains status information it contains typically condition codes plus other status information condition codes are again stored inside this PSW in addition to some other status information so what are the common fields for example sign so what is sign it contains the sign bit of the result of last arithmetic instruction so what was the sign of that whether that was positive or negative zero whether the result was zero or not carry if we have a carry or a borrow out of the higher order that is stored then this carry bit is set inside the psw equal if you if we have performed a logical comparison then this equal will hold the result this equal will be set if the result was equal then overflow if we have performed some arithmetic operation and there was overflow the data was not able to store inside the designated register at, uh, uh, size then we say that there was an overflow add from the higher order bit so that is indicated inside this overflow register interrupt if we have some software or hardware interrupt whether the, whether to allow that interrupt or not that is indicated by this interrupt register we can enable it or we can disable it if interrupts are disabled then all kinds of interrupts are disabled we cannot interrupt the currently executing instruction but if interrupts are enabled then if we have some high priority interrupt then the currently executing instruction can be removed and we can execute that instruction and the supervisor mode that i was talking about that we have two kinds of modes to execute every kind of instruction user or supervisor or operating system mode so which mode is currently going on whether we are executing the instruction in user mode or in supervisor mode if it is in user mode then it has limited uh, capability then it has a limited scope and if it is in supervisor mode then it has some uh, supervisory uh, control we can uh, check the status of these registers or something else now final topic that is the examples of register organization so let us see register organization of some of the processors so at the left side we have mc6800 processor so it was an old processor it contained these kinds of registers this was its register set data registers it contained oh, eight data registers then address registers it again contained nine address registers it had a program status a program counter and a status register this was the register organization of mc6800 and then if we talk of 8086 the famous processor by intel it has general registers four then pointer and index registers four then segment registers four then program status and flags 
so inside the general registers we have accumulator which is used to hold data base register count register and data register if you have performed some kind of assembly language programming then you might have used these registers inside your programming you can even use them inside the c language then pointers and index registers stack pointer which is used to implement stack and pointers to the top of the stack we have base pointer we have source index and destination index these are again used inside the assembly language programming then we have segment registers which point to different segments inside the memory when we uh, execute programs inside the memory we have different segments we have code segment that stores the code data data segment that stores the data on which we are operating we have stack segment a stack that is used to store data in the form of last in first out principle then we have extra segment then we have program status then general purpose registers inside pentium second 386 pentium second which was the processor famous around 2004 uh, 2003 so it has ax bx cx dx these are general purpose registers but they are e extended we can use their left side or right side eax extended accumulator extended base register extended count register extended data register we have extended stack pointer base pointer source index data index we have flags we have instructions now let us see the register organization of the latest processor that we are currently using intel core i7 this is the register structure of intel core i7 it again has eax it has 32 bit registers EAX but inside this EAX register we can separately use it is different halves we can use 8 bit AL 8 bit AH and same is the case with these things and EBX ECX EDX stack index destination base pointers these are different registers code segment stack segment data segment extra segment and we have these different kinds of registers available in our modern processors the core i7 so they these core i7 processors are making use of these registers so this was all about register organization so in this lecture we covered what are registers so what are different types of registers what is register organization and then we covered these examples of some of the famous processors what are the registers available in these processors so thanks for watching this lecture so allah hafiz